So this is, I'm going to leave the music on a little too. This is Kama Open Pilot, and it's a full self-driving system, right? It can be installed aftermarket in pretty much any modern vehicle, right? So I bought this car, by the way, just recently in the beautiful state of Colorado for just under $16,000 completely financed out the door. Amazing deal. I will actually put information how to contact Jamal, the guy, the really cool kid who sold this to me in the description. So if you live in the state of Colorado, this car, the, the 2023 Bolt EV and EUV, both qualify fully for federal state uh, refunds. And I signed up for a vehicle exchange program in the state of Colorado that allows you to turn in, if you have an old gas clunker, probably worth a thousand or two thousand dollars, you can trade it in and they'll credit you an additional six thousand dollars off. So essentially twenty one thousand dollars off the price of this sticker price. Now the dealership uh, Celebration Chevrolet down in Aurora played some funny games with that and I beat them up a little bit over it because they want this market adjustment. They want a piece of the action kind of like a mob would. And uh, when I presented it that way, I said, hey, look, I think these laws were written specifically for the taxpayer, not to make the dealerships wealthier. Uh, they kind of balked at it and we negotiated down pretty good uh, the price. But the problem I had in trying to obtain one of these I decided I wanted this car after watching some Sandy Monroe videos, uh, reviewing it. He broke it all down completely. And uh, at the very end, he said everybody in his shop drove it, liked it, and recommended it. So that's what sold me on it initially. Trying to track this down in Colorado was tough. A, because they've stopped building this car. And B, one dealership down in, Color in Aurora, the Celebration Chevrolet, uh, sort of cornered the market on it by buying up all the other bolts available in any dealership in, in the state. And as a matter of fact, this one came from out of state in order to satisfy what I wanted on. I wanted two options. One is the adaptive cruise control, which I'll go into. But, uh, and the reason why it was because Open Pilot stated on their list that it needed to be a bolt with adaptive cruise control to be compatible with their version of the software, their release of the software. So that's what I wanted on it. And um, they cornered the market on all these vehicles and this one had to come from Biloxi, Mississippi. <laughs> so it took a few days to get in, but I got it. I'm very happy with the car. I was disappointed getting rid of my work truck. I had to really uh, bite the bullet on it when I when I dropped it off. I, I was late getting there because I had to run to Home Depot and pick up some fence posts and cement bags before because I realized, uh oh, <laughs> last minute, I'm not gonna be able to do this in this new car. So I dropped up, I, I picked up the stuff and then I went and dropped off the car and on the way I was wondering if I made a huge mistake in getting her into my work truck. But uh, when I drove home in this vehicle, I was like, wow, this is posh. This is really, really nice. And I have not been disappointed in this vehicle since. So Jamal is his name. I'm gonna link his number in the description field. Give him a call if you're in the state of Colorado and want a great deal on a great car. They've probably got 15 of them at any one time on their lot um, and it's definitely worth the price so um, anyways into open pilot one of the reasons I got adaptive cruise control was because the standard code from comma was uh, compatible with these vehicles using adaptive cruise control I've learned some things about it since installing it I installed the device itself uh, using some other videos that I'll link to that were instructional or helpful. But this area in the behind the uh, rear view mirror has plenty of space in this version of the vehicle. The 2023 looked more open than the ones, the videos I watched and it fit very comfortably. If I decide to keep this, I'm gonna route this through, I'm gonna break out some of these vents here and route this cable up inside of it so it's very clean. But I don't know yet. 
the jury's still out. This is sort of an initial impression of this whole open pilot. Um, they had Super Cruise. I did not test drive it. I might go down and check it out now that I've driven this thing around a little bit. And sometime over the next month, I'll see if Jamal will let me test drive a vehicle with open pilot. Uh, Super Cruise, it's called from General Motors, is their standard one. The big benefit in my mind as just a practical consumer is that you don't have to mount an extra camera up here in the corner that takes up some windshield real estate, um, which to me is very annoying. I like to have as much view as possible on the road and everything. So that device, when you have a beautiful functioning camera right down here, screen right down here, is annoying. Also the fact that the only two or three cameras really, there's two in the front and one, one facing me to make sure I'm paying attention to the road. Um, you can only have those two forward facing cameras, whereas this vehicle has a camera in every angle of the vehicle. So the capacity for hardware and uh, developing software is a lot more featureful and functional and you could have all your display down here on the normal screen instead of in the way of this of this windshield so that's my criticism of it but um i understand it's all beta open source and has a lot of beautiful features that are worthy of trying it out the second thing i would discuss on it for anybody that's watching this that might not know anything about open pilot or just curious about it is the difference between a stock factory uh general motors version of super cruise versus open pilot is a it's open source number one so there's a community of developers out there working on it um whereas gm has to hire and train and maintain their own groups of developers um, two, I don't know how, I can't speak to General Motors uh, Super Pilot, um, and I know Ford has their own Blue Pilot or whatever they call their brands, but a lot of manufacturers, auto manufacturers are developing these types of systems now. But what I do know about uh, the Comma Pilot so far, and I don't know very much about it, is that it uses, it's basically chat GPT driving your vehicle. It's, an, it's a large language model connection. So it learns the route as you're driving it. Uh, if I program a route into this, like my route to work, it's learning a better way to drive that route as I drive it with it. So that's kind of a, a nice feature to, well, it's the future of, and I don't know whether General Motors has actually implemented that large language model in their super pilot software or not. Um, it's closed source, like I said. So we're going to go. You want to check it out? Yep. See what you lost in your, so I'm, I'm learning two things, two features with this new car. There's a feature here called, um, it's one pedal drive. I've got two pedals down at the bottom because every time I explain this to somebody at work, they freak out. I still have a gas and a brake, but there's a button here that if I highlight it and turn it on, uh, it's one pedal drive. So literally when I take my foot off the gas, I never put my foot on the brake and I come to a full stop. It's pretty amazing to get used to. It's a it's a regen feature that I was kind of understanding with the Leaf, but the Leaf's regen behaves completely differently. It will not bring you to a complete stop. This one does. So um, yeah, we're off. I'm gonna go on a simple route and you can see up in the camera, it's gonna kind of outline the road for us here as it, I guess, learns what we're doing. And how you activate or how you turn on the drive mode from comma once you've interconnected it and you, there's a harness you buy with your vehicle that's specific to your vehicle it basically intercepts all the signals that are going to the drive system for this vehicle and it will take over your cruise control whatever method of cruise control is implemented so um, the one this one interacts with I guess uh, straight from comma is with adaptive cruise control. Um, 
or an EUV without Superpilot. So if you get Superpilot, it won't work with Superpilot. It won't overtake its features. So now I'm gonna turn on cruise control. And now the car is driving itself. I'm hands-free. Well, I still have to maintain uh, awareness of my surroundings, of course. And I, I can still make minor adjustments and I'm guessing Making minor adjustments, if I do make them, is part of the learning algorithm. So it can sense when I'm making minor adjustments to either the gas or the steering. And it will learn, hey, why did he maybe figure out there was a rut in the road, I'm hoping. There was a rut in the road or maybe a speed bump that it didn't recognize or know what to do with. And if I take control, it's learning that that's what it needs to do for the future. Now it's seeing these cars slow down. You can see it automatically slows down. I'm not even hitting the brakes or the gas. Is that freaky? Yeah, that's kind of cool. <laughs> and watch, then it takes off again. And I can set the... So you set your speed the same as you would on a normal cruise control. But I, I do have to switch it into adaptive cru cruise control to work with the open pilot uh, out of the box. So now it should stop. If it doesn't, I get really nervous here. See, there, it did it all by itself. <laughs> wow. It's a little nerve wracking to get used to. And it does hard brake a little too much here. So um, I'm, gonna hit, I'm gonna hit the brake. That turns it off. You heard the beep, the chime saying that now you're in control. Um, so autopilot turns off automatically. You can see it on your dash readings, whatever's standard for your car's autopilot signals will be still standard. It's only interacting with those signals, not interrupt. It's interrupting them, not uh, replacing them. So now I'm gonna turn it back on, and but I'm gonna put the speed up to the speed limit, which is 55 here. And it will maintain distance that you select. In this case, for adaptive cruise control, I got three, the most distance available. But it also auto steers, and you can see how it's picking the path in the upper. So I don't know which lane it's gonna pick here. It obviously picked the left lane. And it's going awfully fast for my comfort level as a pretty much a grandpa. So it's gonna hard brake here, but I might take over if it has if it does not slow down fast enough. Which I have not hit the brake or had to hit the brake. So it did do a stop, although again, that was too hard of a stop for my comfort of driving. So I don't know how to teach Jack GPT that, you know, the version of Open Pilot here that I don't want that level of braking. I want it to notice what I notice, which is red light in the signal, uh, red lights coming on in the cars in front of the car in front of me and it's time to let off the gas a little bit, right? That's how I drive. So I don't know yet how to interact with it so that it's learning that, that type of behavior. But um, again, this is all, this is like my third drive with the vehicle. So once I get started, it turns off uh, when you stop. You have to give it some gas to get it started, or I actually hit the brake accidentally, so I have to flip back the speed settings. It's set to 55. <clears throat> the other problem we're gonna see is, I don't know how it's gonna interact with weavers, you know, cut-ins, um, in cars that wanna spin speed around like this. So we'll have to wait and see. But those are the things to pay attention to. So there should be a way, in my mind, if there isn't already, to teach, the, to put this thing in a learning mode to where I'm driving the full vehicle and this thing is only learning what I'm doing and can adjust according to my driving behaviors. Some of the things I have noticed with this, in Colorado we have terrible roads. In the winter the ground freezes, contracts in the summer, and creates a lot of ruts, potholes, etc. 
One thing I did notice driving with this on my last drive, it doesn't do a good job of detecting and avoiding potholes, which for the Aptera is going to be even more challenging because we've got a third wheel in the center of the car, and uh, I don't know how open pilot can be adjusted for that. But I do notice that I can make minor adjustments to the steering wheel. Ooh, 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 it's coming to a... Uh, <laughs> it's a little scary. Uh. Mm -hmm. Are you impressed? I am impressed. All right. More wow factor than you expected? I guess so. <laughs> but the car is actually driving itself right now. It's kind of crazy. It is very crazy. Um, definitely not full self driving, not even close, but this is a great step in the right direction. It's getting there. Um, I just need to learn how to interact with this large language model so that I can force it to learn the behaviors that I want to see and feel comfortable with when driving. I expect there's gonna have to be some coding involved and maybe a fork of my own from the open pilot software. But I'll decide whether I have the time or inclination to do so after a few more. But I get 30 days with this for free uh, if I decide I don't like it, I can return it. Um, that's their compensation for it being so. It's definitely not for the faint of heart in terms of the hardware installation even. Whoa, here we go. It's stopping. Yeah, it did it all. Look at that. Wow, still, all by itself. Still hands-free. There, now it comes down below six miles an hour and it warns you that um, steer is unavailable. It says press resume to exit standstill. Okay, where do I press resume? Oh, I don't know. I don't know where resume is, so I messed things up here. I don't know why the map showed up. But I'm gonna have to turn it on again. So right now, autopilot's turned off. I can see it on my dash. The, I disconnected it by hit, tapping the brake. I tap the brake or this regen button that happens to be unique to the EV, the Bolt EV. And to re-engage normal cruise control is what it's after to get back in sync. So I'm just going to hit the up button. That's what resume is on this car. And uh, let's see it went through that pothole. I didn't like that. So I got to teach it to avoid the dang potholes, I guess either train it or program it. I don't know which. Uh, I suspect it's probably a combination of both. First you gotta probably tell the large language model this is what a pothole looks like and here's, here's what we want to do to avoid it, right? So it's a fun little project if you're a programmer nerd like me. Can be a fun little project depending upon whether I really want to invest my time into it. But in the meantime, I got three months of XM radio, Yacht Rock radio, my favorite, of course. So if you watch this little guy here, he'll detect when I'm not, see, when I'm not looking at the road. If I, when I'm looking away, it gives a little indication that, hey, and if, if you do that too long, it goes through a sequence of features where it'll slow down and stop the car. Uh, so you do have to be paying attention at all times. And ideally, you should. You can have your. You're not going to disengage. I, I believe from what I've read, you're only going to disengage this if you pull hard a certain torque. And um, I don't know what that torque feels like. I haven't done it yet, but I will play with it and try it. Um, but. I'm hopeful that the OpenPilot and the Comma 3X, the hardware, is learning 
if I do decide to make minor adjustments like for a pothole, learning that I'm doing something that's a negative feedback loop to the large language model itself to say, hey, I did something wrong, I don't know what it is yet, uh, maybe, but I'll figure it out in collecting up more data. So in some sense, it's like trying to teach a teenager to drive. <laughs> All right. But you actually get to adjust it instead of just get nervous and yell at him. <laughs> are you taking exception to that? Yeah. So here we are, hands free, all pretty much all the way out 66 here. If I hadn't tapped it off accidentally at the light, um, another thing. I noticed too, like I said, for speed bumps and for dips in the road, we have a lot of canal ways that are kind of engineered into our roads in Colorado for water runoff. Um, this does not really understand to slow down enough to avoid the big, the big bump at the at the bottom or at the top of a of a bump. So those are a couple improvements yet to be implemented here. So I'm going to keep my hands close because it seems to be a little ping-pongy right now. Um, the adaptive cruise control, by the way, for anyone interested in the car itself. So from what I learned, I wish I'd known this before I bought the car, but you can implement a fork of OpenPilot, just not the base code, from comma. Uh, you can, there is a fork that will work with the non uh, a EV without adaptive cruise control. If I'd have known that, I probably would have gone that route. Save me 500 bucks, and especially if I'm going to play with this thing. So I'm going to turn on my signal a little. No, I'm not, because this guy's coming around behind me, and he's being a real typical driver. Now I've beeped at me, so I'm going to change lanes now. And yeah, it did it. So I did the, I'm gonna change lanes again. I did the pull to change the lane and it did the lane change, but now it's coming way too hot <laughs> on these cars because they're going actually pretty fast. And they slowed it. So the hard factor two, that's why I wanna be able to look at the car, the brake lights in front of the car in front of me. Is some of these drivers right in front of you, especially after they cut in, uh, they're hard breakers, big time. Okay, so now I'm going to bring the speed up to I-25 speed limit, which is 75 or 78. Uh, nobody goes 75 even. So let's see if this thing does the merge. Looks like it is merging. Good. How about that? It even uh -huh. merged itself. We'll just head down to 52 and go back up to 87. Look at those beautiful mountains, by the way. Beautiful state of Colorado. That's if this thing could be working a lot better. That's the stuff you can enjoy a little bit more, even as the driver. And it says make driving chill. That's their motto. But <laughs> I have to say. Until you get used to how it operates, and it's in, it's little inconsistent behaviors, it's not very chill. It's quite uh, anxiety making until until you understand it. So um, it's a good motto. It's a good goal uh, to achieve. I just don't think it's quite there yet. Even after you become more comfortable with the with the behaviors of the. So far, so good. For my third drive, it's not bad. But this could definitely take you. So on the freeway is where this completely excels, of course. Um, although ironically, at higher speeds, you're at more danger. So uh, you got to keep all that in mind. But 
you do have a tendency to relax a little bit more on the freeways just because there's less stoplight, stop and go activities, etc. That car right there can get this in it as an option for twelve thousand dollars. This at a thousand fifty is probably a better option. And I'm guessing Tesla is uh, utilizing large language models in their development of um, what eventually will become full self-driving. So they did a Taco Bell run of this open pilot. The, the, what was it, July of last year? Look at that guy. That's the other scary part. Is I don't think it detects motorcycles or bicyclists when you're in the city too well. So you do have to be a little bit more alert around them. Most of them are like that. Taco Bell run is a classic. They literally put an address in, destination address in, and it took them turn by turn, stoplights, brake lights, everything, uh, to Taco Bell and back again, I think, um, which was an impressive feat for full, full self driving. So, yeah, I got to figure out whether I want to play with this thing. I got 30 days to find out. Wow. It's pretty fun. It is fun. Yeah. Are you, you're more impressed than you thought you would be, right? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I knew you would be. So, so far, no hands. Mm-hmm. And it does a little better job, of course, lane centering than the adaptive cruise control. The adaptive cruise control feature on this car, literally, you hit the lane and it goes beep beep, and then you feel the little tug on the steering wheel to bring you back into the center, but it overshoots it and you go to the other line and it does the same thing. So you're, you're basically weaving back and forth like a ping pong ball <laughs> between the lane lines it's not worth it. I mean, the only thing it allows you to do is if you're a little distracted, you hear it and feel the tug, you go, oh, you wake up a little bit more. And so it just is more of a driver alert feature than it is really driving for you like this provides. This is lane centering stuff. So um, it's kind of a the next level to adaptive cruise control. Adaptive cruise control basics is just maintaining the distance from the car in front of you and uh, alerting you when you've gone too close to one of the lane lines without having hit the signal. So in order to make adaptive cruise control not alert at you and give you the little tug, you put your blinker on first, you'll see that the, there's also signals in the mirrors to tell you if there is a car in your blind spot. Um, However, unfortunately, this is what I was referring to at the outset, this can't make use of all four cameras. So you can't see cars accelerating up on you, from behind you, that kind of thing, for the AI to be able to make an intelligent decision as to how to get out there with just this unit. If it were plugged in to all four cameras, I think the AI could get a lot more input necessary to be safe. So that's a downfall of just that unit right there versus being able to hack into GM's uh, code base wherever it's stored inside of the car itself and just develop what's on comma inside the car itself would be a, would be perfect, right? But um, I don't think there's any chance in the world GM would cooperate with that type of So I'm going to take this off ramp, this 52, 
I'm going to turn on my signal. I don't know how this works, but I'm hoping it's going to detect. I want to take this off ramp, and it's going to go. It's not, so I'm going to give it a little tug. I gave it the tug, and now it's going. So it rerouted. So you got to, in addition to turning on your signal, you got to give the steering wheel a little tug to tell it. That's what you want to do. Now it's accelerating because there's no one in front of me and my speed's set at 78. I don't want that. I'm going to turn it off because after he gets out of the way, I expect it's going to think we've got an open lane and we don't. So I'm going to turn right here. And here we are in the beautiful state of Colorado. We get our beautiful mountains, but I'm going to turn this back on. Now we're at 78, which is a little too speedy. Quite a bit more. So I'm going to tap down to 55. Actually, 57. And we're back in. You heard the, the dings, right? Mm -hmm. So this does have a, a map on it, and you can use that map to program in a route. Like I can program in my route to work and I'm interested to learn about how that feeds the large language model for getting at least that route I drive regularly improved for potholes and other criteria. I don't know if it does. I suspect it doesn't until you teach the large language model what a pothole is. It's not going to know how to avoid one. So there are going to be additional steps in addition to just playing with it or just operating it in order to improve your route. But there's our beautiful mountains. I am going to miss this state. So will you.
aggressive, more aggressive. I could have coasted a little more there personally. So before it takes action, it's a little later than what, how I typically drive, but I'm a grandpa driver. For sure. Do you want me to 
keep getting footage? Sure. aggressive I think that was beyond I think that was the brake pedal at that point that was friction yeah that wasn't just regen mode it started up again look I didn't touch it for that stop it was so brief I guess I didn't have to saying is that I would have either got this vehicle without the adaptive cruise control and played with the software if I'm gonna, as if I'm going to keep this anyways or just pay for the super pilot and be done use that instead you know whatever that provides my expectation would be that one day you're going to be able to get full self driving in this type of uh, setup but I don't know Again, I think the side and rear cameras are invaluable inputs to the large language model. So I don't know how they would do that here. They would have to upgrade to something that somehow taps into, you know, uh, not just through this ODB1 connection, but actually taps into the electronics to see the input from the cameras, all cameras. So see, it doesn't take off yet. Oh, look. Okay, yeah. All I had to do, and I don't know if I even had to do it, honestly, but I tapped the gas just to say, okay, giddy up. Give it a little kick in the belly with my spur. All right, you're done with analogies. <laughs> Thank you. 
okay. It beeped, telling me the yellow, whatever that was, but I didn't touch the gas or the brake, and it took it right back off again, even after the warning. So maybe it will, once the car pulls away long enough. I'll probably piss everyone off behind me. But I have no problem with that. Steer unavailable below six. Okay, that's fine. That's all it's saying. But it does. Look, it adjusts. Dang. It's driving. Oh, okay, now it's beeping at me. All I had to do was give it a little check. Yeah. This is a Colorado Boulder County thing. I wonder why it did that. I mean, it said like you said something. Oh, yeah. I said okay. Yeah. Oh, 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 was... But those yellow flashing lights are s specific to Boulder County. Um, you have to stop when those lights are flashing or you could be severely ticketed. Um, pedestrians have all the right-of-ways as they should in our state. So I'm gonna go back here. Go down to 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. What, what, what's my speed limit, 25? Yeah. But I think it jumps up to 30 up ahead, no? Probably at 15 for Mountain View. No, it's still 25. Nobody goes 25. something at 17th. I'm going to see if it'll do a left turn on its own with just the signal and the tug. Okay, it's going. 
Is that? No. No. Oh, it overshot that corner. It yeah. Cut the corner too. It did not do that. No, it was that was not a good good display of its features. So it's a long way from full self driving, that's for sure. But the goal of full self driving, if you think about it, the number one killer of it, anybody are vehicles. Mm -hmm. The number one killer. And you watch people drive, it drives you crazy. All the hard stopping, acceleration, speeds around. I mean, for saving, even on a trip to work in the mornings, let's say they save themselves 10 seconds by zipping around you to get to work on time, they've increased the risk of everyone's life by a percentage that just is crazy making it kind of angering, right? So that was it. I don't think it's going to drive us. We did it. Taco Bell. That okay. was it. What I'll stop it now. I say it's great. Okay. We did it. <laughs>